Brent, hey, what's going on, man? Long time no see. Hey, Marcus, good to see you, man. Yeah, good. Um, it's been a while. <laughs> it has been. I mean, physically, we haven't seen each other in person in a couple of years, but we've had yeah. a few run-ins on social media and uh, a couple quick quick chats here and there. But um, I, I think, you know, we're, we're going to set up this conversation to sort of talk about some relevant topics that you and I are both interested in right now around fitness competing, coaching, the businesses that we're running. Um, but I think people might be interested to know just how we kind of came into awareness with each other. Like how, how did we meet? And I want to hear your story. Yeah. I'm curious to know when, uh, I popped up under your radar. Yeah, I was, I was like, yeah, we started planning this and I was like, well, yeah, how am I going to like frame that? Cause it's kind of, it's obviously in a lot of life situations, it's sort of this blur. And then all of a sudden they're just the person's there. Um, well, I know like when I first started, obviously in CrossFit, I was, that was 2000 and, 12 and you were already kind of established like you you know you'd, you'd been to the games by then at least once right team team games three times by then 2013 was my first individual games yeah oh okay well um i guess it would have been 2013 when i you know i i went to regionals for the first time that year and obviously you know like was watching all the other regionals and as, as much as i could with the coverage and then watching the games and um you know wasn't able to qualify for another uh, two or three years and so it was kind of watching watching you do your thing and then yeah in 2016 you know you had a really good regional you set uh, an event record in the wall ball pull-up workout um, which was impressive because I think that was my lowest score and I was I remember watching your video at least once or twice thinking like we both went on broken like what did he do differently than me why is he so much faster <laughs> and then when we were at the games I remember I borrowed your uh, your voodoo floss actually oh yeah and, uh, you said yeah, yeah, and you said uh, when you're done with it, you got to roll it back up, and I'm like, yeah, no problem, Marcus. Um, <laughs> and, um, yeah, other than that, and then since then, obviously, um, you know, I, like you had a really good games that year. I remember if, when I came back to the gym, people people mentioned you as much as they mentioned a few other people. They're like, man, that Marcus guy really did well. And kind of since then, I've just sort of been keeping up with what you've been up to, and you know, really enjoyed, especially over the last like two years here since you've sort of upped your social media game um what you've been putting out and you know i always tell people like man that marcus he's got like the strongest strongest instagram follow in the crossfit game as far as i'm concerned so yeah, yeah. well thanks for that yeah i mean i think the story is kind of similar too i i do recall i think oc throwdown there was a year that you won that yeah, that's right. I yeah. wasn't the, there. The reigning but... oc throwdown champ for those that don't know oh because you're that's that was the last year they did it yeah that's it yeah, so I think I competed a year before that in the OC Throwdown, and I was uh, I wised up to know not to go back because it was just brutal. <laughs> but I watched you win that, and you know I I I got coached by James Fitzgerald and was friends with Michael Fitzgerald, and so I kind of was just aware of the Canadian athlete scene, and so I just paid attention to you after that, and then um, certainly saw you going through your regionals. Uh, I, I don't even want to call them struggles. It was just an evolution of you just to get to where you needed to be. But, um, and then of course the year that you kind of broke through at the games, um, I think the 16, uh, my big memory was we walked over to get our Compex units together. You were like, hey, I'm going to get my free Compex unit. I'm like, okay, I'll come with you. <laughs> so we walked, yeah, yeah, yeah. we did the walk through like Vendor Village and, um, which was, uh, I think it might've been the only time I stepped foot outside of the athlete area, like the whole weekend. Cause it's crazy. It's like, at this point, if you were to step out in a vendor village, like on a Saturday, it's going to suck so much energy out of you. So we kind of were low profile on it through the uh, crowd. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, yeah. yeah, I mean, it just was, uh, I think that was the year that at the games, I got my first two heat wins ever, my, my history. And then in the, in the, which was the top time, of course, at, at the moment. And then in the heats that followed, you beat me in both events. So actually three <laughs> times you did that. The rope climb snail push, I set the, the then you won that event. The, the D ball over the shoulder, you won that event. And then the sled drag after the heavy jump rope, and then you won the event. And each time you put me out of the money. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> you were kind of on my shit list. No, I'm kidding. I was just like, you know, gosh, how can a guy that's that much taller than me, you know, move so much faster in certain certain elements? Of course, when I think about it, those were tall person workouts, not really yeah. 
you know, not a lot of squatting. Um, yeah. yeah, and then ever since you've just been my, my uh, I'm, I'm a, you're my, my favorite athlete to watch because of just how you approach the sport. Um, clearly hard work, clearly, you know, some, some talent, like inherent talent, but it's, uh, it's, a, it's a thoughtful approach that wins, in my opinion, and I've always felt that way. And, you know, talk about yeah. thinking athletes a lot and <clears throat> the value of being a thinking athlete. And I just love watching you uh, execute on that and just be a model of how you do that to the best. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, then that's kind of what I always enjoyed about, uh, you know, watching you do your thing. And um, a lot of people don't know this because it's not like public knowledge, but we were almost on a team together at Wadapalooza in 2017, the team Zevia. And uh, you weren't able to make it sort of last minute with some family commitments. The baby was going to be born soon. But um, yeah, it was going to be you, me, and Nick Block. And then as a replacement, we got uh, Irving Hernandez. That's right, right. And then Irving couldn't swim. And so that kind of yeah. took things out, out for you guys. Irving is like world class in a handful of things and then maybe a couple of things he struggled with, right? Yeah. Yeah, I was bummed oh, I couldn't. A, he was a weapon in a couple events. Like it's, oh, it was yeah. so cool to be there and watch him do his thing. And then, you know, just it was really just like swimming. And I, there was just one other thing that kind of held him up. Just like there was something that held me up. And like I tripped and freaking fell down a hill with a 200 pound bag on my head. Uh, so we all made mistakes. <laughs> um, just a quick story about Irving, and you, would, you can appreciate this. The most impressive thing I ever saw him do was the first year they had that uh, overhead squat chest to bar ladder for the open. Yeah. yeah. Watching his video, he, he set the event you know, record. He won that workout. I think it was like the round of 20 or 22 or something, and he had finished the 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 second set of overhead squats and he had like just a little bit of time to do the pull-ups and he did a set of 20 or 22 chest bars unbroken at the end of a 20 minute workout when your grip is fried and i'm like that's just physically not possible to yeah. do that but he did it it's pretty crazy yeah that's kind of his dream. yeah i remember what it was like it was magic watching that you know he just he just like legit ran out of time. Like everyone else ran out of energy in their chest to bars essentially where they got like, okay, I'm doing, I'm doing doubles now or triples. And he's just like, I just like ran out of time. Like it wasn't me. It was just like, I went unbroken and it's, uh, was it? Yeah, so exactly. yeah, yeah, that guy's nuts. Yeah. yeah, that's wild. Um, yeah. Well, what, um, yeah, let's check in on kind of recent, recent stuff happening like with training for you. I mean, what's, What's been happening in the past three to six months and, and what is, I know you've made this big transition in the past year uh, to becoming just like full-time athlete man and obviously you're doing things on the side, you're filling your time because it's not training 12 hours a day but um, yeah. yeah, what's been, what's changed for you and what's been really rewarding about your training in the past three to six months? It's been, it's been really different. I mean, um, you know, sort of my, my shtick and my thing that, you know, some people knew me by was the fact that I was, you know, full-time, I had a full-time job. I was, uh, I was an accountant at a tech company for, you know, the years I was, first few years I was successful in CrossFit and then just recently sort of like uh, October of 2018, I um, decided to make the switch and just train full-time and focus on CrossFit full-time, which was, you know, a big decision. But um, yeah, it's been, it's been good. It's been, I've been training more, obviously. So just, you know, more hours in the gym, more push-ups, more pull-ups, more running, more squatting, you know, all those things. Um, and it's been really good. It's been like a unique challenge. I think it's been challenging in ways I wasn't expecting. And in a lot of ways, I think it's kind of, it's been harder than, you know, the other way. Because the other way, it was like, well, I have to be at work. And then there's only this limited amount of time to train. And so you just like, you just do that on repeat, on repeat, on repeat. And it's very hard to do, but it becomes very routine where when you have like more time in a day, it's sort of yours to spend as you see fit. And there's like a lot more kind of like invisible temptation to spend that time wastefully. Um, and sort of I've learned after talking to more people that have had similar experiences, it's really about, you know, like my job is to eliminate as many distractions as I can, um, within reason, um, to create more time to warm up, to cool down, to train, to recover, you know, to sleep, 
10 plus hours a night and like that seems like awesome and simple but it's not you know it's it's, it's actually like really hard <laughs> yeah yeah I, I imagine in particular because you spend the majority of your life having your hands in a lot of different things and like by necessity being having to work to you know have a career to provide like all that you're doing so many things and it's like okay now i have to i have to do very little and if you have that character built into you where you're like i, I can't just sit still do nothing and now it's like well you need to do nothing so that you can actually physically perform at your potential that's it that's been the challenge right and then i mean there's also the, this there's sort of like this this it's this duality where there's you know there's that and then there's also you know going to the gym still when i don't want to um you know because I'm, I'm tired sometimes and i'm sore and then you know because i have that extra time not that i ever made the excuse before <clears throat> but the there definitely isn't an excuse now to go hard right you know if it's if it's like you know rowing and burpee intervals it's like all right brent like you don't you don't have the luxury of going at 90 percent you know, to kind of, it's like, you kind of got to go at a hundred here and like sort of see what happens um, within, you know, obviously not every single session is like a hundred percent effort, but you know, you have the time to warm up. And so, you know, if you're doing heavy squat cleans, you can usually go a little heavier than if it was a little more rushed. Um, yeah. And so combining that with, um, yeah, with also kind of this like balance of trying to do less and yeah, without like stressing myself out. Yeah, it's, it's been good. It's been different. Yeah. I think it's been more challenging than I thought it might have been. But uh, also like, you know, without just as giving like, as I was hoping it'd be. Rewarding as I was hoping it'd be. Yeah. I mean, certainly you don't have any recent competitions to sort of use as a, a litmus test as to like how this has gone. But if you had to just sort of based upon what you're feeling inside yourself, has there been a measurable difference in how you feel your fitness is changing in this new lifestyle routine where you have limited focus, you're more focused on training, you can push that extra, let's call it 5% in training or 10% in training because you don't have the work obligations. Like, what are you experiencing within your body and within how you feel and perform? Yeah, I'm getting better. You know, I think that, let's say from uh, September 2018 to you know January 2019 it's been the most productive what is September October November December it's five months five months let's call it the off season it's I think it's been the best off season five month off season I've ever had um, you know I feel like you know the the needle has moved in every every aspect that it needs to move or stayed the same and move further than it has in those five months I mean obviously it's a little different because you know, it doesn't have as far to go anymore because I'm much better than I used to be. So, you know, you can't keep putting 50 pounds on a back squat every year. Eventually, you know, that's going to become smaller increments. But, um, yeah, you know, putting more work in and, um, you know, staying like pretty much injury free, a couple little things here and there, but nothing serious. Um, yeah, it's just like I definitely feel like I've made more progress. I'm very confident that, um, you know, the next time I step onto a competition floor that things are going to go really, really well. Yeah. yeah. That's scary, man. That's awesome. Good for you. Yeah. That's good. Um, and so what about you? I mean, I'm, I've been, I've been chatting. So like, what's been, uh, you know, I mean, I guess like, I'm not sure, like I know a little bit cause we've talked about this before, but, um, you know, you had your last competitive uh you know outing was in the 2016 CrossFit Games and you finished I believe it was 11th was that right 12th 12th sorry it's um, okay it's all right and yeah so that was yeah <laughs> yeah I mean how had I not taken all those uh those first places away from you yeah dude I mean I could have been top 10 man we would have been you know five thousand dollars richer over here come on Brent <laughs> no hard feelings though right <laughs> yeah none none no <laughs> I got a good um, friend out of it. That's that's the winning, that's the take home message. All listeners out there, <laughs> Brent and I are close now. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So tell me, tell me a little bit about like, you know, for me that's kind of been my story. Is you know, I, I was working full time. I didn't quite make the games for a couple years. I finally made it, kind of cracked through, and then 2016, 17, 18, I had three regional wins and three um, three good finishes at the games of. Uh, fourth, second, and fourth, stole some event wins from Marcus Philly in my first year, uh, and then, you know, moved from the full-time 
accountant to full-time athlete in that in that span and like so tell us a little bit about like that 2016 um you know you had you had your best games right you 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 won your heat a couple of times you really put your stamp on a couple of uh workouts and, and on the games i think as a whole i think people you know knew your name after that and i think you were you were happy with how that went so tell us kind of like the transition from there and the last couple of years yeah well 2016 was um was a huge year for me and just a lot of changes in my life generally i i had just sold a business like my my gym that i owned for years um so kind of a diverged and, and was then looking to kind of create something new and i had this sort of window of like i think the business sold like two weeks before regionals and so I kind of had regionals to the games sort of to recreate myself and I just poured everything into my training and it was I I think in the back of my mind I knew there was some finality to the CrossFit Games 2016 like it was I didn't think like oh I'm, I'm done after this but I was like this is a unique time in my life where me and my wife just got married we want to have kids like I'm going to, I'm transitioning from a business that was kind of on autopilot to now I'm going to need to create a new business, which takes work. It takes time. So yeah, it was a special, it was a special year for me and it showed in the, in the performance that it was just my best performance. And I was able to be competitive on day, day three and day four, which was always the thing that just crushed me was that I'd come to day three and day four and just sort of be like hanging on just be like when's this going to be over versus like the last event of the competition fighting for a first you know or a, a top placement you know that was that was a huge change um and then of course after that that games appearance um and the 12th place finish um you know i had to kind of face reality my wife was pregnant um we were going to have our baby in february i loved the feeling i had in 2016 um, but I also knew like I had to get my new business up and running, which was going to be a coaching business. It, it was going to be online coaching and then eventually another gym that I would open. Um, so a lot of energy went into that. And, and as those demands came up, you know, the training, I was still doing it, but it was just like I, I wasn't able to put in as much as before. And then yeah. I was still going to compete in 2017 and the baby was born the week of the open um the week before the open and so i just pulled the plug i was like i'm i'm not going to put myself through the physical and emotional stress of a competitive season that's going to potentially be six months long uh while i'm trying to navigate you know new family new uh you know being a father and um, business and and so forth so the transition to me was like i'm going to put that on hold for now i'm i was 32 at the time I'm 34 now, and uh, without that thing that was consuming all my time, cr uh, the CrossFit Games com competitive season, it was like, well, what else am I going to pour myself into? And I poured myself into an online business that really caught, caught fire, so to speak, um, and that it just blossomed into something that took up a lot of energy in a good way, but that was a focus, along with seeing my daughter you know through the first six to 12 months of her life and um so then when 2017 came around i was just like you know excuse me 2018 season i just wasn't i didn't have the mindset to be like i'm going to the crossfit games it, it just yeah. as as you and other athletes were realizing like i need to do less and and train more i was doing more and kind of training the same and a little bit less and you know that that wasn't going to spell success for me uh, in the way that I had come to experience success, which was one focus, make it the, make it everything, and go and execute the best I can, so I can I can walk away feeling like I didn't leave anything undone. Um, so the training has remained really a staple in my life to support everything around me, make me feel good, make me uh, continue to look good. Right? What's that? Make you look, make you look good. Look good, look good for <laughs> sure. <laughs> Stay looking good. Um, yeah, and then uh, exploring kind of training concepts that I now feel really strongly about when I'm talking to people and educating in the in the world. Excuse me. We'll have. Oh, yeah. Sorry, 
I wasn't sure if that was me. I'm like, maybe no one else is hearing this. <laughs> I was like, maybe I'm like linked up on two devices, but I'm just gonna deal with it. No. <laughs> oh man, let's just go ahead and turn that off. Hey, real life. <laughs> it's real. Hey guys, I think I wanna try and put some of these uh, thoughts that Brent and I are talking about around awareness as an athlete, being a thinking athlete into practice. And I think a great place to start is in your warmups. I too often see people racing through their warmups, trying to get done quickly, or actually not putting a lot of energy or time at all into their warm-up process. And it's a great opportunity to get your body and your mind prepped for the training to come by bringing some awareness to some subtle things. So I'll show you how we structure a functional bodybuilding warm-up. And we're gonna start with something called the half kneeling bottoms up kettlebell press. The reason I like to choose this exercise is because it incorporates a whole lot of things from shoulder all the way through the core into your hips for stability. I'll show you a couple reps. When I'm executing these reps, I'm thinking about keeping a really engaged core. My hips, my glutes are squeezed tight and even my thighs. So I'm getting like this full contraction in my torso and into my lower extremity, all while having to keep a really stable upper body and upper torso position. I say stable because we're choosing this bottoms up kettlebell position, which is really shaky and, and unstable. My grip has to be firm. If I'm pressing too quickly and I get shaky with my scapular balance, the kettlebell is going to fall. So I have to press kind of controlled, slow, thinking about engaging my lats on the way down, keeping a strong grip. And after about five reps, six reps of this, I'm starting to build a sweat. I'm starting to feel this connection from top to bottom, which is gonna to translate to the training session today that's gonna to be overhead squats. So give this one a try, and I'm gonna show you how we can build in a couple other lower body centric and then full body uh, warm up movements that can coordinate for the overhead squats that are coming in training. <laughs> <laughs> so cut back to, um, yeah, just thinking that training still served a purpose for me, but it wasn't competitive. And, and that really has been um, so much of what has driven, you know, we're gonna, I'm, I know we're gonna speak about our businesses, but it's so much of what's driven the intention behind how I'm approaching uh, the message around how I coach and how we coach as an organization here is what is life for somebody who loves competitive fitness or at least the idea of competitive fitness what, is it, what can it look like and what can training look like for you um, that aligns with a, a balanced life where you're doing other stuff, not where you're Brent Fikowski full-time athlete because there are very few people that can make that work and make that happen and it's hard to make it happen. Um, and there's a misconception out there that they can just, I can just, I can do what Brent's doing like every day and still go to the job and still, you know, wake up with the kids at night and then they wonder why their back blew out or they, you know, have no energy throughout the day. So, um, but to wrap this up, this long-winded answer, it's also that I'm 34 now and I'm 35 in October of this year. And it's kind of sparked a bit of a fire inside of me to say, okay, I'm, you know, I, I, I still know there are aspects of my fitness that are good enough to compete against the best in the world. But to compete against the best in the world, it's more than just having talent and having skills. It's, it's putting in this huge body of work consistently every day with high volume to be able to, to execute at the games. And that's not my future, but I do believe maybe I have a future as a master's competitor in the, in, in the sport. And that, that just excites me. And I know it's not like, I'm not gonna just put away my other obligations in life to focus on that. But, um, you know, I, there, with the open in, the 2020 season starting in October this year, there will be, um, I think, an opportunity for me to you know, engage in the sport again as a, as a 35 cool. plus. Um, so cool. hopefully they don't, you know, throw that out the window too and say, hey, no more regionals, no more masters. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't. Uh, kill my, I, kill my vibe. Uh, kill my vibe, Dave Castro. <laughs> it's a very big possibility. That's why it's like, don't quit your day job because could not. There could be something, nothing to yeah. do. Well, that, and that's, yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, when I made the decision to go from, you know, my job to full-time athlete, you, you got to weigh all that stuff. It is a new sport and there's, 
there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of in anything in anything there's a lot of uncertainty, but in any sport, and then this one, you know, obviously we've seen it change. And like just as I was like thinking about making this decision, this was like you know September October. You know, all this stuff was changing, and I'm like, is this like a good time? to like, yes, I'm all in on this action. Like, get me some of that. <laughs> It's like, oh, I had a few people, they're like, Brent, like, do you think you should maybe? And I'm just like, you know what? I, at that point, I was just so, I was, I burnt out isn't the right word, but I was, I was, I was burning the candle at both ends for a number of years. And I was like, some, something needs to stop, you know, because I just couldn't, I couldn't keep up with the, you know, the sort of demands of all these different aspects. And so I was like, oh, man, you know what? If I can always get another job, it's kind of the... You know, yeah. so I, you're yeah, just on sabbatical you know, right now. That's it. But don't quit your day job for the master's, the master stream. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Really <laughs> not. Okay, I'm going to touch on the banded lateral walk. This is something I see done often in uh, gyms worldwide and training programs. And there's some subtleties that I think people miss. Uh, the lateral band walk or any type of band walk where this band is placed around the knees or the ankles is a great way to warm up the glutes, warm up the hips, uh, and again, get some coordinated core and lower body interactions and contractions prior to your training. So uh, we use these nine inch stretch bands and I like placing them around the ankles. Uh, some people like to put them around their feet, the bottoms of their feet, but the bands end up breaking really quickly. So save yourself having to buy them every other week. Put them around your ankles. As I'm doing a lateral band walk, what I'm trying to think about is maintaining tension on the band, okay? This business of people bringing their legs together, they're gonna get a little bit of a pump in their hips and their glutes, but we wanna be precise about our movement. Remember, we're bringing awareness to the muscles that are contracting. My glutes, my hips, I'm staying in this quarter squat position, tall torso, and I'm taking small, deliberate steps so that I can connect my brain to the musculature that's actually contracting for me. Your glutes are gonna get pumped. You're gonna to start to feel some blood pushing into those areas. That's gonna be important for the squatting we're gonna do. And then the last point of performance is like the toes in the toe position. So common mistake I see is people sort of duck walking this and they're turning their toes out. I want you to make sure that your toes are pointed forward. And what's gonna help with that is leading with your heel as opposed to trying to lead with the ball of your foot. So lead with your heel, keep tension on. You can go for 30 seconds, you can go for distance. Either way, you're gonna start to connect and feel those as we move into the next part, which is coming up in RNT overhead squat. Um, well, I think, I think talking about our training backgrounds for the last couple of years and, and how we know each other and um, it's just sets, sets up perfectly to sort of say, okay, well, why are we doing what we're doing now on a business front? Because both of us, and we've talked about this before, we approach, I mean, this, the energy that you're putting towards a professor project, I've put towards Awaken Training Series and Functional Bodybuilding is built out of a need that we saw and it's also built out of our, you know, our our particular interests. So um, I'd love to hear sort of the picture that you could paint for why Professor Project became what it is and, and why, you know, what are you doing with that? Yeah, right now? Um, you know, it's funny. I'm, I'm still working on the elevator pitch uh, for the Professor Project. It's not as uh, clear and concise as I'd like, but I guess that's why we have time. Um, you know, I guess like we, we both approach. <laughs> Come on now. Come, Come on, on, Philly. Philly. This is a All right. Professional, professional thing. I mean, I don't even know how to I don't even know how to work technology. <laughs> it's going to go through it. I'm going to put this on do not disturb. There we go. I got Satya over here giving me a hard time. All right, let me watch this. Hey Brent, you want to give us the elevator pitch on the professor project? I love it. Um you know, I think what it is for me is like I, you know, I have a why behind, you know, like everything I do, especially like, you know, we're, we're talking about the sport of fitness. And so, you know, in the sport of fitness, like there's a, there's a why behind why I step with my left foot instead of my right, you know, when I start my lunges. There's a why behind the direction I turn when I do my bar facing burpees. It's just like all these reasons and over, you know, six years, six and a half years now, 
competing, you know, I just keep adding to this list and it wasn't really like documented anywhere, but over time you just develop habits. And then, you know, I continually have seen people in gyms, especially when I travel, um, obviously I have some influence in the local gyms here. Um, it sort of like permeated that, but I'll, I'll travel and I'll do a seminar. Or I'll meet some people at a gym and, you know, I'll be watching them and I'll give them, you know, tips basically. And I'm like, Hey, you know, keep lower on this or like, you know, raise your, raise your hips on that or whatever it is. And, um, and then even down to like mindset and strategy, there's all these sorts of things. I think I've sort of accumulated this professional type knowledge, um, in, in a new sport and felt like there was a need for that. And there was, you know, people, people wanted to tap in. I think there's kind of pictured this male or female CrossFitter in a gym where like they want to get better. They want something more and they don't quite know what that is. They want like a resource they can tap into something they can trust, like kind of like a coach. Um, but a re like, you know, a really comprehensive resource. If they had a question, the, the answer would be in there. Um, and then even if they really, if, if they had a question, a lot of the times people ask a question and I'm like, you're asking the wrong question. This is actually what you should be asking. And then here's the answer. And so, you know, kind of trying to basically create a platform, you know, the professor project, create a, a website, a service that kind of just dumps everything I know into there. And right now I don't really know that much about programming. Right. Um, I've never programmed for myself. I've never programmed for anyone else. I don't claim to have a lot of knowledge there. I think I could, I could do all right at it because, you know, I've had some really good coaches and have a really good coach and, you know, I could learn that in time. But right now for me to be like, do what Brent Fikowski does right now.com. I'd be like, that'd be kind of bullshit, you know, because like, I don't think you need that. And it would, wouldn't be from me anyway. Um, and so I wanted to provide something on the more like educational side of things. And yeah, that's what the professor project is and is becoming. And then I want it to become a platform where right now it's, I'm the primary driver of the content of the information of the hacks of the, the mindset, the strategy, the pacing. Um, but then in time there'll be more people on there. There'll be, um, you know, other top CrossFit athletes or dietitians or, you know, athletes from other sports kind of like giving information still to the, the, the fitness enthusiasts, the CrossFitter, um, and providing them with this sort of like wealth of like a classroom type situation, just like, like, you know, uh, Neo plugs himself into the matrix. He's like, I know Kung Fu. It's kind of like that. Like, Hey, if you want to know everything I know about how to compete at this level, like it's pretty much there. It's, it's really everything but the program right now. Um, you know, and you can get the most out of what you're doing already and like maximize every minute of your day to hopefully reach, you know, your goals. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I'd be happy to contribute at some point on how to set event top times that Brent then comes and beats. So if people want to know how to do that. I will be... I'll be your first contributor. Happily do that. <laughs> yeah, hey, you have, you have just as Philly, much experience. Philly's on, on the professor project to tell you how to be second best, but you can just read my content to know how to win. Um, <laughs> cool. Well, that's yeah. I mean, I was going to say though that that's, you know, I put out a um, an infographic recently on my social media that was like a pie chart of of success, like how to create success. There's lifestyle nutrition, there's training, and then there's one third that's mindset. And I think in the mindset category, when you're an athlete in a sport, I mean, you're a competitive athlete, obviously there's the, the, the visualization, the things that you do when you're quiet by yourself, you're not training, but then there's also the, the, the mentality, the mindset of being you know, an athlete and in competition and being smart about how you approach just the little things that, I mean, how many, placements at the CrossFit games come down to tenths of seconds when you're racing against somebody at the finish line. And, and that's, and not even like head to head, but yeah. heat to heat. So little things like I know you are speaking about you know, this little rope climb technique. This is how you turn on a bar facing burpee. Think about using this foot versus that foot. Um, they, they make a difference in a sport. Um, and then of course there's recreational fitness people that still like to go fast and they still want to they're driven by the idea of like optimizing their times even at a local affiliate and they care to know that stuff as well so you, you don't have to be 
you know, doing uh, sanctionals to need this information. You could just have a, you know, I mean, there's recreational golfers out there that watch thousands of golf yeah. tip trick videos and that's because they just, they're passionate about it. And we have a huge audience of passionate fitness people that like the sport, even if they're not winning and they're not at, at, at the big yeah. events. That's it, right? I think, um, you know, I, I literally was just helping someone the other day here. Uh, there's a small competition going on in the area soon and he, um, you know, he's preparing for it. And he's like, you know, we're talking strategy and he kind of rolled his eyes like, oh, you know, like really important stuff. And I was like, yeah, like, why not? Like, if you're going to go, you already paid the entry fee. You're, you're going to stay in a hotel. I'm like, why not pack your own food? Why not have a specific strategy for every event? Why not have, you know, water directly after you finish? Like, why not? Why not just do it? Try and win. Like, do it. Like, you know, like, I don't, I'm like, I don't, I'm like, at least, you know, at least you're honest. Like, I, I, I don't want to hear someone tell me like, hey, Brent, I'm going to go to the games and then they like eat terrible. I'm like, well, that, like, I don't, like, I don't think more of you, I think less of you. Or if someone's like realistic, say like, hey, I just want to do two local comps a year and I want to like train two hours a day, four days a week. And I want to see how well I can do. I'm like, yeah, like, let's do it, man. Let's, let's make a plan. You know, that's what it's all about. Real goals. And then just like being honest with them and going for it. Yeah. Okay, so we've put together this functional bodybuilding warm up. The bottoms up kneeling kettlebell press, half kneeling. That was going to coordinate shoulder, hips, core all together. Um, since we're doing an overhead squat, we want our shoulders to be prepped. We did some band walks, lateral band walks to get the glutes and the hips firing as well. Also to raise the core temperature, get a little bit of a sweat. And now we're going to do something a little bit more specific to the actual movement of our strength training session coming up, which is the overhead squat. It's called an RNT overhead squat. And essentially what we're doing is we're using a bit of tension from these crossover symmetry bands or any other type of band that you have. You can use this uh, PVC pipe or a dowel as well. But the tension that's on these bands on my wrists is going to force me to really engage my shoulder blades as I descend into my overhead squat position. So I'm gonna tr travel through the range of motion relatively slow. That's gonna allow me to feel all the different positions of the movement. And feeling positions means, okay, when I'm halfway down, how do my shoulder blades have to contract and engage? When I'm three quarters of the way down, how do I have to contract and engage? When I'm at the bottom, where's the weight shifting in my feet? These are all things that you can think about when you bring awareness to your warm up movement and you slow things down and you add subtle pressure points or uh, tension points like bands to key areas of the movement. I'm guessing that you guys are going to be asking the question, how many reps, how many sets of each? This is really dependent upon the person and about how ready you feel for training. Definitely want to do enough repetitions that you start to feel subtle fatigue. I think that's an important step in the warm-up process that is often skipped. It's like, I don't want to tire myself out for my workout that's yet to come. And when people arrive at the workout that's yet to come, they're actually not prepared. So go a little bit further, a little bit longer in the sets and the reps of these movements when you're warming up. Get sweaty, get fatigued, and if you're looking for actual sets and reps to apply to these types of warm-ups, functional bodybuilding warm-ups, you can check out those on our website. We've got 60 unique warm-ups that you can go and use starting today. So yeah, tell me, tell me about like awaken training series, functional bodybuilding. I mean, I watched the videos um, on Instagram and uh, yeah, like a lot of people around here um, that I know of like enjoy watching them and they sometimes kind of add in some of those little little things that you're always working on, like some different movements and they, they love that. But tell me, tell me what that came out of and uh, yeah, and where it's at now. It's been, it's been going for a while now, a lot longer than the press. The yeah. Press yeah. Well, I mean, I, uh, I had two years of not competing to think about building something and, um, but yeah, it, it, it really came from, it started with a personal experience of it's really that post 2016 season. I mean, I, all the buildup and the, the, the kind of come down after that, which I'd love to chat with you about and just your experience with that, but it was rough. Um, for me, it was the roughest it had been ever. Uh, 
because not not only did I compete at the games, I then played, you know, a little grid, uh, grid league after that, and um, it was uh, that was the most intense grid league season too. So we we finished the games in what was it yeah. August first or something, and then we we went to Idaho in September, and we finished grid league by October like first. So it was like in four weeks we had played like eight matches. And, um, you know, I was just, I was totally blown out. Um, and so the feeling of going from like fittest on the planet or feeling, you know, I'm way up here to feeling mostly low energy, like injured, just can't even get into the gym with any, in, any excitement to lift anything or any, bring any intent to my training, um, that's just, that's just not a fun place to be. And so working with my coach to recover from that, we went back to the drawing board and really incorporated a lot of old school bodybuilding principles within some of the functional patterns that we're using in the sport or people are training for in the sport. And so my training just started to look a little bit more like bodybuilding with a functional spin to it. And that caught that caught a lot of attention on social media. Uh, people, I think, being very interested in, hey, like, what are you doing? Like, I, I'm interested in that. And for me, it, I was a little surprised at first because I'm getting, you know, 10,000 likes on a video of me doing van walks or, or something very, you know, not very flashy, or uh, landmine, yeah. landmine press. Um, but the more I thought about it, the more I realized a huge uh, portion of our audience came from bodybuilding background or they came from a traditional gym background. They got into CrossFit and CrossFit has done this like, it's like this 360. It's like hard, fast, comp compound exercises. Like you're doing everything, um, which ramps people's intensity up. And it's a big shift from that bodybuilding mentality of sets and reps and take my rest, go to the water cooler, yeah, yeah. whatever. Um, yeah. And I came from that background too, big time. Like that was how I went through my teenage years and my college years was more of that style. And I always felt there was some disconnect between the competitive side of training of, for fitness and then what I used to do. And I, I kind of missed aspects of it. And it really, would, I would always miss it the most at yeah. those low points when I was feeling yeah. down when my energy was low, it was like post-competitive time because that's pretty much all I felt the desire to do was just like, go get a pump. Really? Like go and just move yeah. and feel good, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Get my muscles yeah. like perfused with oxygen and blood and nutrients. So I just like, you know, it gives you some, it gives you energy. It gives you life force. I mean, Arnold talks about it like it's the greatest feeling on earth, but it's no joke. It, it feels amazing. And um, so when I went through that, regeneration phase of my re regeneration cycle of training post 2016 games it was like oh man this is it this is that connection from bodybuilding to functional training because i'm not i'm not doing machines i'm using stuff in the gym to create a similar feeling and and it's helping me to feel alive again and to get excited about snatching and doing you know kettlebell swings and row repeats um yeah. And so that really fueled this Awaken training series. So the Awaken training series was my way of giving people a snapshot of how this training can unfold in a progressive 12 week you know, training cycle. We are a coaching business, Revival Strength is a coaching business that does a ton of individual coaching. Just like your coach, just like I'm coach, we get individual plans that guide us to our goals. We still believe in that. However, Awaken Training Series was this opportunity for people to get a glimpse of it and to say, okay, hey, this is, this is what the training systems and philosophies of Revival Strength look like. Um, and it, uh, it's, it's resonated with people for you know, the past couple of years, I think because there's other people like me that feel um, that doing high intensity functional movements, you know, constantly varied every day, five days a week, four days a week 
after a period of time of adaptation and they get good at it, they're like, whoa, this is really, in, this is really hard. Like, oh man, I'm feeling kind of beat up. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's like the honeymoon phase of like the first 18 months of CrossFit is over and now you're actually decent and you can produce some power and you're getting thumped by some workouts and you walk out of the gym at 7.30 a.m. to go to your job and you're kind of ready to hit the nap as opposed to go and get after life like exercise was supposed to make you feel invigorated. So that's been the, the sort of guiding light behind Awaken Training Series is to say you can still have the functional training and the things that you love about the sport of fitness in terms of movement and some of the progressions, but let's not forget to honor the the pump and like just like that. moving, That's right? <laughs> like <laughs> moving for the sake of moving. Honor the pump and functional. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of where where Awaken Training Series is at, and um, and and it, and it's you know it spawned a couple other projects um, in the functional bodybuilding realm for us. Uh, when people experience the training and they're like, oh, I want to know more about this, we're trying to provide educational content for for coaches and athletes to just like, oh, this is how you do the movements correctly, right? We got 100 people telling you how to do a clean correctly, but no one's telling you how to do a kettlebell half kneeling press correctly because that takes just as much skill and precision to get a real value from it. And I, that's part of the reason why I love watching you train is because you use a lot of these movements as, as we'll call them, you know, your accessory or structural balance work that you do, but you execute them with such precision. It's like, that's going to get him stronger. Like I, I see you move and I'm like, okay, yeah, he's, yeah, his scaps are going to be really, really strong next season because he's doing it correctly. He's not just like doing kettlebell presses with his elbows out like a chicken wing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's um, yeah, that's that, that that stuff all speaks to me. I think it's really cool. Like, you know, you're you're seeing like you know, I think that I I see a lot of people in in gyms, um, you know, like functional gyms or CrossFit gyms that definitely could have a lot of value from like you know doing the awakening training series or functional bodybuilding and I and even like I kind of recommend it in in a roundabout way where I'm like you know like take some time off from doing you know the wad of the day like there's nothing wrong with taking you know and sometimes that means like in the gym depending on how the gym's set up or somewhere else um but it's like you know just just do do a strength cycle do like you know pick a bunch of accessories that you know you're weak at you might have a weak core or a weak upper back and just like you know, just crush those things and like you'll come back and people I suck at snatching so they, they build to a heavy snatch three times a week right? like how often, how often do you see that and then it's like man like you know you suck at snatching because you know of these three things it's like your ankle flexibility your you know your your shoulder strength in a certain position like you know your upper shoulder strength and then uh, you know your, your back or whatever it is right and it's like if you just worked on those things you didn't snatch for a month you, and then and then snatch for two weeks you'd get a PR Right and kind of understanding that you can work work around the CrossFit movements to get better at them, um, and do it longer. And you kind of have these you can do these waves of, you know, like locks because obviously the stimulus from that you know this hard kind of training is is amazing. But you know you can't you can't just keep training at crazy intense volumes for with crazy intense workouts for three years straight. Right, you know you do those two months and then you have a month or two of not so much and then it, you kind of have these these swells and you go up and I think that's why I think that's a huge reason why I've been really successful is you know I've had coaches like raw strength and conditioning and now brute strength that have understood that and like you know like you talk like after you know after the games especially in 20 I think it was 2016 man like you know we did or even after regionals in 2015 you know there was a there was a long time where my training did not look like CrossFit right um CrossFit-esque it was in a CrossFit gym using CrossFit things but you know, it wasn't just like, you know, kipping and touch and go, you know, four time workouts every day. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, completely resonate with all of that. And it's, uh, I think that's what's been so such an eye opener for fe- for folks that have experienced awakened training series is that we, it's a big departure away from a lot of the conventional stuff. 
And you know, in the first two weeks, I get all these messages from people like, hey, when are we gonna start doing full cleans and snatches? And I'm like, uh, th 36 weeks from now. <laughs> like, we're not, you know, that's, we're not doing it right now. Like, that's not the point of this. This is a slightly different approach. And for those people that can persist through that and, and kind of believe in the, in the plan, they arrive at the end and they're like, I PR'd my power clean, I PR'd my strict handstand pushups, I PR'd like all of the stuff that they wanted without really doing it. They've done elements and they've built up capacity in, in aspects of their fitness that lend themselves really well to CrossFit. Yeah, man, that's it. Um, yeah, it's really cool. Like I kind of, you know, it's interesting. We've both sort of seen, you know, like so much benefit from this type of training and for, for obviously for ourselves, but um, you know, just for the general population. But I think we've both kind of seen you know, I'm still in the, the competitive, very much deep in the competitive realm. And so I, I've sort of tried to create something where people that kind of want to be part of that. And even if it's, it's in a large scale, like there are a few people in the professor project that like one of them, you know, could win the open in his country in Europe. Um, and then but then there are a lot of people that are just, you know, just there, you know, they just want to want to get better and want to do their local comps or just want to you know do the open for the first time. Um, and so it's still kind of that. And then, you know, because of your experience coming out of that, you know, and seeing the physical kind of like wear and tear that it took on you for those years, and especially that season with, with grid. I, yeah, I've heard stories about people that did grid and like we're looking at the workouts. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you did that for like oh eight God, matches in four weeks. It's, like eight matches. <laughs> it's incredible. Right. It's incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Uh, incredible. Yeah, I will definitely, I will, I will always look back on that as the, the, the most challenging physical sport I ever took yeah. part in um, because yeah. it's because it just the time pressure was just so uh, immense you know there was so much speed and as you know like you go really fast it it hurts way worse than the long grinders yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure. and then uh, yeah and it's cool that you know you've come up with something uh, you know for people to, to interpret and to understand and give them like a glimpse and a you know a look into like what what you had to go through and um, yeah I definitely I'm sure that you know like you can't you can show people the path, um, you know, I'm sure not everyone like fully understands it. Like you get those messages after two weeks, like, when are we doing snaps? It's, it's like, it's not about that, bro. And some of those people will get it and others might not, but I think it's like, it's awesome that you've actually created something to fill like, you know, a very big need. Yeah, I think. I think. Well, yeah. thanks. So uh, that's it for now. Those of you watching on the internet, uh, we'll be back for part two. Brent Fikowski, Marcus Stilly. Signing out. <laughs> Signing out.